Hey Raghunath, tell everyone about our Patreon community. Sure, Kostuba. The Wisdom of the Sages Patreon community is an incredible online yoga resource. If you like the type of yoga wisdom and culture we share on the show, then our Patreon community is a great next step. This is a listener-supported podcast, and any level of sponsorship will unlock a wide range of live and archive classes, talks, and even workshops. Raghunath teaches, I teach, and we have a host of other excellent teachers on topics ranging from yoga philosophy, asana classes, storytelling, Ayurveda, kirtan, cooking, meditation, and a lot more. We even have an incredible online bhakti 12-step recovery group. So if you want to check it out, go to patreon.com slash wisdom of the sages. All right, let's get it on. Live from the world's most ancient city. This is Varanasi. This is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily yoga podcast with your host, Raghunath, and co host and senior educator of the Bhakti Center, New York, Asubadas. Welcome to the show. Welcome to India. Welcome to Varanasi. We're here on the bank of the River Ganga with a big live, live crew. Say, Harry Ball. I don't know if you can hear that with this microphone, I can't hear but they all said, Harry Ball. But anyway, we had an incredible day today. Oh, my God. It is, let's see if I say, it is Kostuba. Yeah. Uh, uh, hold on. This is, say what you have to say. What is it? To say it? It is world's oldest continually inhabited, inhab, inhabited cities. Once called Kashi in ancient times, was from the kingdom of Kashi. Um, the lion capital of Ashok, it was nicknamed. Um, and it has been, it was known for Buddha's first sermon. And after Buddha, I mean, it was happening before Buddha, obviously. Um, but uh, also Shankaracharya came here. Lord Chaitanya came here. You know, the great uh, everybody Bhakti poets like uh, Ravi and yeah, this, is, this, is, this is a place. It's a place. Yeah, you know, Vallabha, I think, was here, too. Mm-hmm. Tulsi Das. That's right. Tulsi Das. Anyway, we're in the midst of it. And I tell you, it's just it, it, it's just wonderful to, to be by the Ganga again. How are you? How's I'm my airport? You're, by the, well. you're downstream from us by the Ganga okay. also. You can just jump Isn't in a boat. And come I'm going to float, I'm gonna float you a little boat. Message <laughs> a bottle. Okay. Here goes too, I miss you. <laughs> Baba Ganoush. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going over there in Mayapur? Oh, Raghunath, it's it's it just couldn't be nicer, you know. It's so beautiful, and it here. changed a lot since we were little. We used to Mayapur? go to Mayapur. Yeah. Well, there's an incredibly massive temple sitting here, ready to. It's a massive it's temple complex. Period. Yeah, things. When I went there in 1988, but... there was not that much there. Much is still the same. You know what's still the same, Raghunath? Radhamadava? Yeah, but I was going to say even before that, you know, when I got Eight here, palm syrup, I got coconuts. here, like you, you, um, you all got off the plane. We, we arrived in Delhi at nine and then we went through, uh, customs and, uh, and, uh, got our luggage and then you went to the hotel in Delhi and then I had still many rivers to cross before yes. I got here. So I got here, I don't know, 10, 10 hours later or something like that. So I got here, it was like, I don't know, 9 o'clock, 9 a.m. Um, on Sunday morning. And, uh, you know, saw Tara, had some fruit, you know, did, did a little this, a little that, tried to not crash, did the show. And then, uh, I can't, are, you, are you muting yourself? Keep talking, keep talking. Okay. Did the show and then went to the Ganga, you know? And, and bathed in the Ganga. And that experience, you know, it's, it's so sublime. It's beyond, 
it's just beyond um, an ordinary experience. And so Tar and I went in there. We we got in there. We went a little deep. And there are a lot of, you know, on Sunday, a lot of people come up from Calcutta to, to go to my point. And there was, like, all these other people bathing in the Ganga. And, like, there's a big group of ladies. It was, like, three generations, like, grandma, you know, a bunch of grandmas and a bunch of, you know, of their daughters and then a bunch of their granddaughters. And they're all in there in their saris, you know, in the water. And they're all chanting together and dipping together you know like they're chanting especially maha mantra then they're chanting then then they'll chant maha mantra all together and then they they go under and then they come up and then one of them starts to chant like like stotrams glorifying the the ganga and and i'm sitting there watching this you know like i'm deeper into the water and i'm, I'm watching and i'm just saying this scene has been playing out for more years than we can count you know, and it's the exact same thing happening here as happening if we came back 500 years ago, if we came back 5,000 years ago, you know, all, all over India, all over the, the whole path of the Ganga that, you know, has been worshipped all this time. And it's, this is a timeless spiritual path, you know, it's, it, it really is, is. It, is, it is, it is, it is, it's, it's by definition, it's spiritual because this has been going on forever. It doesn't stop. It's not some trend. It's not something that comes and goes. This is uh, Sanatana Dharma. This is something that's eternal. And it's so, there's something about it that when you feel it, you just know it, you know? You know that this is how the soul reconnects. This, you know, it, it feels so good. It's such a yeah, charm we out, to it. When we got here, we went out. Sorry. Go ahead. When we got here yesterday, we went out on a boat on the Ganga. And yeah. it was sun was setting. And um, yeah, we we're watching the sunset. And I was thinking this could be 30 years ago, 300 years ago, or 3,000 years ago, except yeah. for a couple electric lights. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you see the backdrop of these temples, which have been also, they've been there longer than they've been there. Like, for example, the deities that have been worshipped there, the temples have come and gone. They've been destroyed by invaders and then rebuilt by kings, then destroyed again by invaders and rebuilt. But, but the deities have always been there. They were hidden at certain places, sometimes underground, and then resurfaced when everything became cool. But this sort of, sort of like skyline, it's and what's been going on, which is, you know, it's famous for people want to die and leave their bodies in Varnasi. So there's these ongoing burning gots where they they huge huge flames burning and you see them where they're burning bodies and it's quite it's a quite a solemn um you know meditation. it's it, meditation but it's not meant as a it shouldn't be done as a tourist place it's a very solemn place yeah. um that people go i mean it's, it's like a funeral and for everyone just to gawk there and take photos is silly um if not rude but I will say it's a very if you've seen it happen and you and you can enter into that um that mood of oh I get it. This is all temporary. Everything that I think is precious, my face and my wrinkles and my abs, it's all about to be burnt in the it's fire. All burn. It's all I mean, um I think it was Alexis was telling me that she went yesterday and she saw like a father losing his mind over a son that was done getting burned. And when you have those deep witness, those, those ch material tragedies, it puts everyone, everything of our, 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 of our, all of our little problems in perspective with the greatest problem with that. We're actually going to leave this body and leave everybody we love. And it makes you either weep or think much deeper and, and what is life and in how much control grave. do I have? Because yeah. no one's planning on something horrible like that. Um, uh, yeah, so it, it's 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 a sort of a magical place that by force is making you go inward. It's got a solemn edge to it. But I'm so glad I'm here. And, you know, like I'm looking at these pictures that There's are some... like um, old drawings on the wall of Varnasi. They look like, OK, this could have happened, you know, here yesterday. They're pictures of the temples and the ba bathing gods. Have you and all gone going out on in Dubkirtan? Uh, not out in Dubkirtan. We've just sort of been 
parking it here and doing Kirtan. Tonight we're going to go out, should. though. Yeah, I think it'll be. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, he did it on the boat last night, actually. We did it on the boat, which was very nice. You know, here in, in my port, it's like sometimes, I mean, not sometimes, it's like you're walking around and you feel like you're floating in the spiritual world. It's something so joyous about it. And I just, this morning, you know, I, I started working on my writing, you know. And then it just dawned on me that I'm sitting here. I got, Tar gave me this room, you know, it's a little room, but it's perfect. It's just exactly what I need, you know. And uh, I got one window that's looking over, you know, towards the Gunga. I got another window that looks over. You know where it looks, Raghunath? Where? It looks in the direction of, of the Jalungi River. And, you know, right across that is where Bhakti Vinod Thakur's home is. Mm. And I'm thinking, actually, in what I'm writing right now, it's like he, he's such an inspiration for it. I, I, I realize, oh, Krishna brought me here to write this. You know, it's like he's the person that what I need writing? to hear from, that I need to think about. Huh? Spill the beans. What are you writing? Well, I wrote, you know, I wrote two thirds of the book already, which is just the four paths of yoga course that I always give, you know, but that's like that first part is like the more conventional Vedanta yoga teachings, mm. you know, understanding the nature of the self, understanding the mind, understanding the material world, you know, the gunas, the karma, mm. time, and then the four paths of yoga culminating mm. in bhakti. But then the second part, it's about one third of the book, but it's the more esoteric part, understanding what is the nature of devotion? What is the nature of bhakti? How it, how it um, is um, the, the truest nature of the self, how it, how it, how it um, surpasses um, in, in terms of our evolution, how it surpasses the levels of karma and jnana. Um, and, and, and Bhakti Vinod Thakur is such an inspiration to write on this topic. And I just got so, I just, you know, I, I woke up at one o'clock this morning, you know, still jet lagging, which is great. And, uh, and began the work and I just felt his mercy just coming, you know, and then I went to Tara, I said, Tara, we got to go Bhakti Vinod Thakur's house, you know? Mm. So he had to do his, uh, sage group. He did his sage group. And then we went over there, you know, across the Jalungi River, went to Bhaktivinoda Thakur's house, went and sat down in the room where he overlooked this area and saw his vision of the Adbhuta Mandir, of, the, of a temple that would rise in the future, that the whole world, you know, would spread the, the, the teachings of Bhakti around the whole world. Basically, he's looking into the jungle and he's visioning this massive temple. Yeah. And which and devotees from here. all over the world chanting Jai Sachi Nandana. It was like yeah. the sort of a mystical vision, and it's manifest manifest right now. Yeah, you're in it, and um, yeah, and, and um, ah, oh, so we went, we, we went and sat down in the room where he had that vision, most likely, you know, like his the room where he would write his songs or he'd write his books, and we just started, we just started singing his songs together, Tara and myself, you know, and reading the translations to them and. There's really nothing more you need to do. You feel what you feel is like that the the presence of these great souls. Ugh, mm. It's 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 um it's so tangible. It's so it's especially here. It's so tangible. You can just feel it. You know. So anyway, I'm very happy here. Yeah, my uh, we were trying to figure out. Okay, well, what are we gonna do here? Because I, I I've never been to Varanasi myself. And um, today we were just sort of a, 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 we sort of broke into the groups doing our own thing. Um, but our group just went along the bank of the Ganga, found a quiet place to sit, offered prayers, you know, for family ones, loved ones, those who are struggling, asking for reconnection and devotion. And then chanting Ganga Stotram and then offering, you know, offering water to the Ganga, putting water on her head. And, you know, then we went to another beautiful place, Shiva Temple chanted the Bhagavad Gita and just realized the more you just sh plug your mouth up with what's spilling out of your mouth and add Shabda Brahman or transcendental sound, the more you're not of this material world anymore. That and simple? that's all. Whenever there's downtime, I, I was joking this morning that yesterday we got here and the rooms weren't ready and I was, and we were all exhausted. And um, those are the tests we were talking about. Remember that? Yeah, it's like tests. you go through this thing. I'm just like, I'm mad at these guys. Come on, man. My room's not ready. 
The food was late. Everything was just like just falling apart materially. And it, I was really moving towards becoming a little like <laughs> hot headed and out over or, here. ornery. Go figure yeah. me. And then yeah. um, we just started That's, chanting the Bhagavad Gita. Then you thought of me saying, hey, Bubba Ganoush, it's OK. <laughs> <laughs> And we started reading the Bhagavad Gita, chanting Gunga Stotra, and we just started transcending everything. And um, it all became blissful. In so one sense, our, Raghunath, it's, it's as simple as that. It's just as simple as that. Open up the Bhagavad Gita, open up the Brahmasmita, and just reading and chanting it out loud, and you transcend. Yeah. You transcend You transcend the gunas. And um, that's our practice here. There's really nothing else to do. You don't have to go so far. You just have to go deep and... Um, that transcendental sound that is part of a devotee's sort of emergency kit is what we have. You can just bring nice. that Bhagavad Gita. Now you got it on your phone. You have all these apps that have all the lyrics. Yeah. What's the app you like, Mara? I think it's called Vaishnava Songs. Vaishnava, Vaishnava songs. songs. That thing is like worth its weight in gold. Vaishnava Songs. Yeah. It's a free app? That That's yeah. a free one. But then there's also the Veda base, which is, I don't know, for it's like every book. For uh, fifteen bucks betas. or something like that, pocket beta. No, pocket, pocket beta is, I think, is free. Oh, is it? I paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, pocket beta. That's a good one. Sometimes there's apps that are free, and they're like, "Continue to pay for this." And like, wait a second, I thought it was free, and I ended up paying. I just hit that button oh, by America. mistake, and I was like, I just paid for it, but it was a donation. I think. I think I donated for that, but I wanted it for free. Anyway. Maybe that's free. maybe it is free. Ah, you know another what? thing I was thinking, Ruggen. I read something you, today. Well, you read reading too. Thing. You're reading and writing <laughs> and and on Facebook. I thought the the rule was no Facebook in the holy places. I don't know. Is that I the mean, rule? That's your rule. I think <laughs> it's a good rule. I think it's a good rule for you, Baba Ganesh. Well, I found something good. <laughs> what did you find? Uh, this well, because you know uh, another thing about visiting these places is they attract special people. Or yeah. special people are born in these places. Yeah. And and even if you just meet them briefly, sometimes these characters you're gonna think about them for the rest of your life. You know, you'll you'll go back to thinking about them. The example, yeah. their their mood. Um, it's it can be very special. I remember I think once on the show I shared about um here in Navadweep where I am, uh that one sage Jagad Bundu. Yeah, he lived in the jungle. Old man, he's been temple. worshiping there for like since childhood. Didn't speak English, but loved every single person. You can just see, you know, the the heart of this. But I, I read, I read this. This was coming. This was on my Facebook uh, page, and it was um, it was written by someone named, and it may be someone I know. It may just be a Facebook friend that I've never met. I'm not sure if, forgive me if we've met and I don't remember. Uh, her name is Kalyani Radhika, and I think she's from Mumbai. Mm -hmm. And I oh, yeah. and I think she must be in Vrindavan right now. And so she was. She shared this little thing in in a photo of her and the person that she's talking about, who is a rickshaw wala, you know, a person okay. that pedals a bicycle a with a with a with a, you know, uh, to to drive you around from here to there, and a bicycle with like a it's like a pedal seat taxi. In the back. Yeah, a little pedal taxi thing. So, um, and he was, he looked like a beautiful man, big white mustache and, and bright face. And, uh, hard she job, said, by the way, hard job pedaling those people job. around, very going up job. hills. Come on. Oh, man. Brutal. Uh, so she said she was, she called him Kaka. I don't know why. Kaka. What does that mean? Kaka. I don't know. Um, but she said, I called him Kaka. He smiled. I climbed I climbed in the rickshaw and I asked, how much is the fare to go to the Krishna Balaram temple? Right in Vrindavan. And Kaka said, whatever you feel like. And I said, no, no, please tell me. What if I pay you less? Then that'll be a big problem. Kaka smiled and he began to pedal. So he just, he didn't even entertain the conversation. He just started to pedal, right? Just think about this mentality. Okay, it's a Gujarati word for, for a, like an uncle. Kaka. 
So, um, you know, she was saying, no, I, I'm going to need to know how much to pay you. And he was like, he just started pedaling, right? And uh, we were chatting the whole time. He was telling me about, what do you think he was talking about? Krishna. Close. Radha. Radha Rani. He was telling know. me you about. tell me, there's 33 million no. demigods. There's various thousands of gopis. Radha, I just what said. A... Oh, okay. <laughs> Relax, <laughs> <laughs> what are you thinking of a time? What a, a, a rickshaw wall in Vrindavan? Yeah, that's he's like talking my, about like my child. That's like my nine year old saying, I had a dream last night. Guess what I dreamt about? I was like, I don't know. Just tell me. Tell me what you oh, dreamt Robin about. Ass. You see, you're getting, you're getting, uh, you're getting ornery now. I can see you're you getting know what tired. I mean? I'm, I'm still a little Come on, Baba off, off kilter. Come on, Baba Ganesh. Okay, okay, go. Talk about Radha. Radha Rani. He was chatting the whole time. He was telling me about Brudge, about Vrindavan. And how everything is decided here by Lali, by Radharani. He was very poor. His clothes were old, but he was so happy and in love with Vrindavan, very satisfied. Um, taking taking her through the different lanes, managing the barricades. Finally, we reached the gate uh, where we have Shil Prabhupada's quarters, and then Kaka. Now tell me how much to pay. And he repeated, pay as you like. I began to pray to Krishna and Balaram. I want, I want to pay more than he expects, so please give me the intelligence to know what to give. I pulled out two notes and handed it over to him. Kaka had a smile. I was not finding the third note. I was struggling. Kaka turned to climb, and I found the third note. Kaka, I have one more. His eyes twinkled. Um, and I asked him, what kind of policy is this? Will you not get cheated? Right. And a fair question. Like, how can you yeah. operate a business like this? <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> People pay whatever they want. And, uh, I asked him, what kind of policy is this? Will you not get cheated? He said, never. She knows exactly what my need is for the day. Right. Mm. He, this is called, we were talking about, I think on our last show, the Q&A, we are talking about surrender, how to surrender, what right. surrender look like. This is what, this is, this is deep surrender, right? I just depend, yeah. Radharani, she knows what I need. Why should I worry about it? You trust. We have so much, we create so much artificial worry, isn't it? Mm. Suffering tremendously with our mind of worry. Where even if you actually, and it, it's such like a, even if you have an ample amount of, finances and resources to protect yourself you can lose them instantly all it takes instantly you can lose everything so it's almost like we're, we're developing we're investing in a false security there's mm. one security christian's going to take take care of us and here's a person that lives it every day you know we may have certain responsibilities that make it hard for us to always think think that way but and 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 we may be at a stage in our life where we really externally can't operate that way. But we have to try to understand this mentality and let it let it um let our minds and our hearts kind of like marinate in it, you know? This idea that ultimately I'm trying to control things in this world, but ultimately I really have no control and ultimately I'm entirely in the hands of God. Mm. And if I'm giving my mind and my heart to God, then God will give me everything that I need and, and, and um, for, for, my, for my own good. Mm. Um, the, the depth, that, that's, that's called surrender, right? And, and, mm. the, and that's got to deepen and deepen and deepen. Even if externally we're living like very responsibly, but internally we need to come, we need to come there, you know, and, and maybe our life can move more and more gradually in that direction. I like that. My barber said the same thing. I said, how much do I owe you? He goes, whatever you want to give. <laughs> whatever. I was like, come on, tell me how much. He goes, whatever. I was like, all right, nothing. No, just kidding. I gave him, I tipped him. I tipped him well. I tipped him well. Okay. Anyway, you can meet people like that here and they can, they can enter, you know, just, just that Krishna can send that person just so that for the rest of your life, you meditate on that, you know, you keep coming back to yeah. that. Sorry, I'm yawning. I'm tired. I just You're got hit with the sleepy stick. 
Come on. I was doing so well. I slept properly last night. Woke up early this morning. And now I'm exhausted. All right. But the Should show must in... go on, Kastuba. Yeah, let's, go into, right. let's go into the Bhagavatam. Okay. Thanks, Mara. Hydrate me, please. Narayanam the Muskritya Naram Chaiva Narotamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tatojayam Madirayat. Before he cited the Sri Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisances to the Supreme Lord Narayan, unto Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and to Sri Vyasa the author. Nasta Prayeshu Badreshu Nicham Bhagavat Sevaya Bhagavati Utamashloki Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtiki. By regular attendance and classes in the Bhagavatam and by rendering service to the pure devotees, all that is troublesome to the heart will become eradicated. And loving service to the Supreme Lord, who is praised with transcendental songs, will be established as an irrevocable fact. Om Ajnana Timarandasya Gyananjana Salakaya Chaksurun Madhatam Nena Tasmay Shri Gurave Namaha I was born in the darkness of ignorance. My teachers are open to my eyes. With a torch of knowledge, I offer my obeisances at their lotus feet. Okay. Reading from Shema Bhagavatam, Canto 6, Chapter 7, Text 31. You know, because, dude, I'm also living vicariously through all these uh, Zoomers and others' experiences and seeing their joy. I just came in oh, to yeah. lunch, and they were. I just said, how was, how was your day? And they were like, it looks great! <laughs> and it's just <laughs> like the power of being in these holy places where you can just meander into any peculiar temple and just meet some interesting people and see some cool deities and get some prashad. It's just like, it's just such a wonderful uh, one. I love this. I love India. I love coming on pilgrimage. It's like the best thing I do all year. Wonderful. Yeah. All right. All right. There you go. Dive there into this. Go. Yeah. All right. Who's talking? Well, what verse are we on tell there? Me, tell me where we're at. We're in text 31. I think uh, what's happening, if I remember correctly, was that uh, did you say thirty-one? Is that what it yeah. is? That um, the that that Indra with the other devas are approaching um, uh, Vishwarupa to become their priest. Remember? Oh yeah. That Indra offended his guru. They lost all their shakti. They lost all their power. They're, the devas were being defeated by the asuras. They went to Brahma. Brahma said, hey, you offend your guru. What do you think is going to happen? This is wrong. But here's what you can do for help. You need to, you know, they were searching. <laughs> Look, you were going to hang it. Mary, just give him oh, a, sorry. a slap. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <You're so yawning. laughs> you ever get hit with that heavy jet lag where you're like. I know exactly what it is. Fall exactly down, standing up. You got to jump a little water on his head, Mary. Something like that. Give him a poke <laughs> with those. Yeah. Give me a poke with your pokey needles. Yeah, give me a poke. <laughs> yeah, and they, so, and, they um, and then and then they did, then they got Vishvarup as the guru. The guru. They're approaching the him right now. They're approaching him and, right now. And they're not doing it well. They're making offenses while they're approaching him. Well, they're not, saying like you owe us. Well, I, we're your, yeah, I don't we're know if they're elders. offending him, but but it's awkward, right? That that they're yeah. they're trying to be. Look at Mary. She's getting all tired now. Well, look at you guys. Well, <laughs> she's <laughs> on it too. Yeah, big time. <laughs> you can, you're so tired you don't even notice um so so uh i don't know if they're offending him but they definitely are kind of like calling on him to follow the etiquette where you're we're like your parents you you know so it's right for you to do this they're being very respectful but at the same time they're kind of um it's a little it's a, it's a little uh manipulative i suppose uh, so, th right. so they're speaking now. I suppose Indra is speaking. Indra text, and Davis. Here's text 31. Dear okay. son, we have been defeated by our enemies, and therefore we are very much aggrieved. Please mercifully fulfill our desires by relieving our distress through the strength of your austerities. Please fulfill okay. our prayers. And, and now, again, we're going to see something so special happen in, in the future chapters, are we not? <laughs> and that's going to be that uh, it's a few chapters away, but it's it's really the theme of practically the entire canto is that the the from the Asura side of the dynasty over there, they're going to through their mystic power, 
they are going to try to create a being that is so fearsome, massive, deadly, that will kill Indra, right? Because they're not surrendered, because they're attached, they, they, they wanted Indra's death, and they tried to create this creature doing their sacrifices and all of their mystic potency and all of their mantras. They chant the mantra just a little bit wrong, Raghunath, just a mm -hmm. little bit, right? Because when, when, you're, when you're practicing bhakti, it's all about your intent. When you're practicing karma, you got to do everything just right. It's like Krishna, he books. says, you know, whatever they lack, I make it up. You know, whatever they have, I preserve it for them. If they're lacking something, I take care of it. When your intention is pure, it doesn't matter if you mess up as long as you're trying to do right. But when you're, when you're in these other practices, you got to do them just right. They, they chanted the mantra a little bit wrong. And instead of creating a creature that will kill Indra, they create a creature that will be killed by Indra. It's like an adult. An adult is responsible for their activities. If, adult, if, an, if an adult That's steals right. something, if an adult fails on a test, then they fail. You know, you can't work around that. And, and a child can take something from a store. A child won't get punished. child wants food. They just cry. The more they cry, the more the parent gives them attention. If an adult cries for food, if I just start crying, Mara, I want food, I want food, it's just going to annoy her. <laughs> so there's Is that there's true, Mara? And, 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 and in, yeah. so in Bhakti, we're actually perfecting the art of crying out, crying out to Krishna. Please, that's come exactly Krishna. right. right? Yeah. Prabhupada says, when we chant the Maha Mantra, what is it supposed to be like? A mother, a baby crying for the mother. Yeah. Sometimes real old people can get away with it, like ah! walking out of a store with a bunch of stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's another thing. Um, okay. So, so, um, oh, so what happens is that demon is Richard Sura, but he's actually an incarnation of Chitra Ketu, who's a, a, a real pure devotee. All right. Interesting. Okay. Let's get it. And, and, and um and Indra's gonna have to fight with him hmm. you know and, and um what, what was i gonna say this oh yeah and so what happens is Indra's there a person that's like okay i'm krishna's devotee but he's full still of material attachments he needs to remain in his position he needs to defeat his enemies all of these material concerns are weighing very heavy on him and all of these material concerns are causing him a lot of anxiety he doesn't yet have the purity of heart to just turn to God and say, God, dear Krishna, I may be defeated. I, I may be successful. I may, I may be defeated. I, I'm just in your hands. I'm not going to pray to you to crush my enemies. I'm not going to pray to you that I can remain king. I only, my only prayer to you is that whether I'm winning or losing, that I'm remembering you, that I'm somehow pleasing you. That's pure devotion. And the mm -hmm. irony is that the demon, who is really Chitra Ketu, a pure devotee, he's actually praying like that. He, he'll be saying, Indra, throw your thunderbolt at me. I'm ready to go because there's nothing in this world that interests me. My only interest is the lotus feet of Sri Krishna. So go ahead. And it's, it creates this really bizarre scene where apparently Indra, who's so good and so he thinks of himself as such a good religious devotee we see his impurity it kind of it, it's kind of like holding that mirror up and it's just like you're not nearly as pure as this demon that's trying to kill you you know uh so it, it illustrates a, a, a point so nicely but listen to how they're speaking here in this verse please mercifully fulfill our desires they're trying to find a priest who's got the potency to fulfill their desires um to fulfill their prayers and so they're, you know, and what are the, because we, we've been defeated by our enemies, you know, when we get to, to Prahlad, who's also born in the dynasty of the demons, he's so pure in his devotion that he doesn't even have the ability to see in terms of friends and enemies, right? He's like, I've heard of this thing before, people talking about friends and enemies. Now I'm actually seeing it. I, I don't know how you guys think like that. How, how can you not see God in the heart of every living being? And when you see that, how can you not love everyone? But Indra is not on that level, and therefore he's suffering, suffering, suffering. Okay. You remember when you first got into bhakti and you were like, okay, if I put a certain amount of time in, 
I think like in eight months, I'll become a peer devotee. I, I used to try to look for like measurements, like, I don't know, <laughs> two years, maybe that should take it to get to Madhya Madhikari and then two more years to get. And the interesting thing is spirituality unpracticed when it's just like glossed over and you look at it sort of like a, a novelty, like I'm a spiritual person. We don't see our shortcomings. We just claim ourselves as spiritual beings. When we actually start doing the work and digging around, it's as if we're cleaning our house. We move mm -hmm. the couch. We find dust bunnies under the couch. We find like an old sandwich. So, you know, we we move the rug. It's disgusting. Is this People what it's come like over our house when you when you do a good cleaning over there? <laughs> no sandwiches. So no, sa you gotta look. You gotta no clean sandwiches. the couch for you'll, you'll. We'll find sandwiches. That's just one thing. An old sandwich is a whole nother thing. It's like once you start digging around in a filthy house, it may appear it doesn't even appear that filthy. But when you start cleaning it, it gets real. It gets real dirty real quick, and you yeah. didn't realize her, how dirty it really was. We're stirring it up. Anyone practicing bhakti is not. We're not practicing for peace. We're asking God to stir it up, stir up our unwanted things in the heart, stir it yeah. up. Show me where I'm at. Hold the mirror in front of my face. Show me how dirty. The face is so I can once get I notice over. it, once I notice it, I can clean it. Yeah. If I don't even notice it, I won't be able to clean it. So a lot of times people can get really down like I'm a mess. My ego's so big. I can't believe I was so motivated. I always had an agenda. I, w I was so I was so incredibly arrogant. And that's a very beautiful thing because Krishna is stirring it up. He's stirring it up so we can take notice and we start addressing it. And that is the uh, beginning of healing all those things. Stir it up. You know Stir that? it up. <laughs> What's that? It's Bob Marley. Oh, Stir, I don't know it. Stir it up. Okay. I never listened to Bob Marley, believe it or not. I never listened to him. All right. It's okay. It's okay. It is all right. Ready? Text number all 32. Right. Since you are completely aware of the Supreme Brahman, you are per you are a perfect brahmana and therefore you are the spiritual master of all orders of life if we accept you as our Not spiritual we, master he's saying we do we accept we you. accept you as our spiritual master and director so that by the power of your austerity we may easily defeat our enemies who have who have conquered us so they're, the, they're I mean, shopping around for the right guy and they got him right he's he's done a lot of austerity so they know when he chants his mantras he's going to chant them with potency right and he's going to do it for us. That's what he's thinking. The demigods continued. Do not fear criticism for being younger than us. Such etiquette does not apply in regard to Vedic mantras. Except in relationship to Vedic mantras, seniority is determined by age. But one may offer respectful obeisances even to a younger person who is advanced in chanting Vedic mantras. Therefore, although you are a junior in relationship to us, you may become our priest without hesitation. When all the demigods requested the great Vishvarup to be their priest, Vishvarup, who was advanced in austerities, was very pleased. He replied to them as follows. O demigods, although the acceptance of priesthood is decided, is, 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 decri is decried, is causing One the second. loss of previously acquired Brahminical power. Well, Rago. Yeah. Uh, yep. You really What's lagged there? out a second there. Could you read yeah. that again? Aww. Where am I, Mayor? When all the... I'm going to go back to 34. When yeah, all the sure. demigods requested the great Vishwarup to be their priest, Vishwarup, who was advanced in austerities, was very pleased. He replied to them as follows. Oh, demigods, although the acceptance of a of priesthood is decried as causing the loss of previously acquired Brahminical power. How can someone like me refuse to accept your personal request? You are all exalted commanders of the entire universe. I'm your disciple and must take many lessons from you. Therefore, I cannot refuse you. I must agree for my own benefit. Okay. Oh, exalted governors hold, 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 of various... Hold, 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 hold. What's up? Why are you so, so annoyed? <laughs> what do you got there, Ragnar? What are you drinking? 
I'm drinking a coffee. I'm drinking a coffee, sir. I'm about to fall asleep <laughs> with my face in this microphone. Drinking coffee out of it's a, a Lori Pag plain glass coffee. glass cup over there. I'm in India, so you make some sacrifices. Okay. I don't have a Yeti mug here. <laughs> All right. So, so it's interesting what Vishrup said here. He said, although acceptance of priesthood is decried as causing the loss of previously acquired Brahminical power, how can someone like me refuse to accept your personal request? So the idea is, you know, he's done austerities, and those austerities have bought him some power, some shakti, you know? And, and, and a, someone like him, he doesn't want to lose it. He wants to keep building it. But now he's been asked to kind of spend it on them, hmm. you know? But he's like, well, I really can't refuse you sure. because you, you're the, the commanders of the universe. You're like the, the, no one more important in the universe could have really come up and asked me to do this. So how could I refuse you, right? So, so I'm your disciple and I must take lessons from you. Therefore, I cannot refuse you. I must agree for my own benefit. But it's again, a, while we're it's a thing like in the Vedas where people do austerities for Shakti, for powers. We're not so much interested in it. We're interested in the Bhakti Shakti. The people who have Bhakti, they have a lot which of Which doesn't Shakti. burn out, right? It does it, not it, burn it, out. Yeah, it's a whole different realm. Yeah. Um look at look at these. Yeah, guys. A, otherwise to, to accumulate yeah. piety or merit. Or Shakti, that's the equivalent of getting like uh, frequent flyer miles or ch yeah. chase points or capital one points. You build them and up eventually and you, you spend them, you spend them all. And then you got no more left. Yes, yeah, like Vishwarup, he must be thinking that like my austerities, they've given me like insights and, and, it's, and so on. But now you you want me to burn them out on your materialistic concern. You know, mm -hmm. you want me to burn them out on your materialistic war. You know, mm -hmm. but I can't refuse you because you're, you know, you're these special in this special position. It's like the president comes up and asks you to do something. Okay, well, I suppose I got to do it. Mm -hmm. Look, we got we got like uh, Cindy Lunsford and Dusty Bridge over there, and I can't oh, quite wow. see who we got, else listen, is there. We got all these guys are in India right now. They're well, I airport. got Martine here and Catherine A. and there they are in the uh, Scotland crew and uh, Laurie Pag and the chief. Where are they all right now? Because they're coming to Mayapur. You, you ride they're tonight? All is that right? Oh, your guys or my guys? Those well, guys, Cindy you know, Lunsford those and that whole guys. crew is coming over here. Maybe first. they're in the airport. That's what I think they, they are. look like they're in an they're airport. Yeah. Getting snacks. I think, I think they arrive here today, Rego. <laughs> we want to take you guys somewhere. Take you to Bhakti No Takwar's house or do something like that. Yeah, we'll do something together. Have you take over for, boat ride. For, for Prasad. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right, let's text, go. We got 15 uh, more 36. minutes here. All right. You can, you can make it, oh, Raghunath. Here, just, just chug that coffee down real, real quick. You'll get one last place. And we're going on a boat ride and walking back <laughs> a few kilometers. <laughs> no, you'll get that second It's only wind. 95 It'll degrees. In. It'll kick in. So, yeah. I'm having a great day, but I've got to transcend the gunas here. <laughs> All right. Oh, exalted governors of the various planets. Yeah. Just thinking about that. Exalted governors of the various planets. Isn't they govern cool? the planets. I know. Is that's very cool? The true Brahmana, who has no material possessions, maintains himself by the profession of accepting silanchana. Silanchana. In other words, he picks up grains left in the field and on the ground in the wholesale marketplace. Okay. By this let's, means. Let, let, let's talk about that for a second. All right. Let's. So he's saying. This is how a serious Brahmana lives, right? Like, I am so free from external influence, so completely untouchable in terms of corruption, everything. That that I what I what do I eat? I go to the field where the where like someone harvested their grains, and I find whatever little grains are lying around still. Mm -hmm. And if I live off that, who's going to be able to buy me out, right? Mm -hmm. And I build more Brahminical Shakti, more Brahminical power. Mm. Um, so he's saying, this is how I live, right? Now, now, now the, the, the wealthiest people in the universe are coming and they, and they want me to act as their priest. That's not, that's not so much my thing. Okay, but please continue. By this means. By this means, householder Brahmanas who actually abide by the principles of austerity and penance, maintain themselves and their families and perform all necessary pious activities. 
a brahmana who desires to achieve happiness by gaining wealth through professional priesthood must certainly have a very low mind. How shall I accept such priesthood? All right. That's, All that's very interesting because we see a lot of that kind of stuff. Do we mm -hmm. not? No. Yeah? yeah. Yes? Mm -hmm. All of you are my superiors. <laughs> okay. Therefore, I'll... Although accepting priesthood in some, uh, although accepting priesthood is sometimes reproachable, I cannot refuse even a small request from you. I agree to be your priest. I shall fulfill your request by dedicating my life and my possessions. I just want to draw attention to this, Rogana. That I don't remember ever quite hearing like, here's a here's a Brahmin, a priest, and he's saying, you know. Brahmanas, they don't necessarily get involved in doing ritualistic ceremony for others. That's kind of like, I don't really have interest in that. I'm more interested in living as a Brahmana and deepening my spiritual insights. But because you're asking me to serve as your priest, because you're asking me to be this kind of um, conduit or kind of go between, between you and the higher beings mm -hmm. uh, so that you can get your materialistic purposes served it's not really my thing it doesn't interest me so much it kind of burns out the shakti that i've been building up but because you've asked me to do it i'll do it and and it's making a sense it, you know a lot of times within indian culture that that priestly role is seen as so exalted but he's speaking of it as like it's reproachable if it's done in 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 that type of fruit of mentality Continuing on. <laughs> I'm sorry if I entirely bored you. It's okay. O King, after it's making okay. this promise to the demigods, the exalted Vishvarupa, surrounded by the demigods, performed the necessary priestly activities with great enthusiasm and attention. Okay. The opulence of the demons, who are generally known as the enemies of the demigods, was protected by the talents and tactics of Sukracharya. That's their guru. But Vishrup, who is more most powerful, composed a protective prayer known as the Narayan Kavacha. Okay. By this intelligent mantra, he took away the opulence of the demons and gave it to Mahendra, the king Indra. of heaven. Okay. Mahendra is. What does Kavacha mean, Raghunath? Kavacha is like a protective, uh, I think it means like a protective gear. Protective yeah, like a field. shield, force a field. Shield, yeah, force field. A uh... yes. <laughs> okay, now let's. We're going to talk about. The, don't don't run off to the next verse yet. We're going to talk to me. Okay. I'm right here with you. Come on, what, do you, what do you need? What do you need? So, so so what's happening here is that both of these, both the demons and the demigods, they're somewhat materialistic. Even the demigods. Mm -hmm. they're in, they're both interested in trying to become the controllers of the universe and their method for doing that is to approach a priest a priest that's powerful a priest that's austere a priest that when they chant those mantras they it works and it works for real and the the, the demons had sukracharya doing that for him he was talented he had all kind of ritualistic tactics that were working for them now it's kind of like when a when a when a baseball team like goes out and lands a free agent, and now they got that guy on their team, and it's like they're more powerful than before. So Indra's like, okay, we've got this powerful Brahmana on our side now, and look what he's done. He's he's composed a powerful shield, a mantra shield for us, right? And he's going to chant these mantras to protect us, and that's the entire next chapter is going to be the Narayan Kavacha prayers. We're going to hear all the prayers. We will get shielded by it as well. But well, but I'll tell you something, Raghunath. What? You know, I think I had a bit of an aha moment. Yeah? What was yeah, because, going on? Well, because the Narayan Kavacha, like I remember in the past, in some temples, they would chant, if there was some kind of um, threat, to the temple they would chant the narayan kavacha really okay. okay and i remember hearing some of the some of the verses like some of the translations in the narayan kavacha and i, I was thinking interesting you know like there are verses that are saying like 
crush my enemies, crush them, crush them, you know, things like that, right? And I was thinking, I don't know, that somehow seems inconsistent with like, you know, it's yeah, the, the pure pure bhakti. It's like, yeah. And but what I'm what I believe now is that actually this Narayan Kavacha, this is the it's the reason why it's placed here in the Bhagavatam. It's not because it's a prayer for the devotees of Narayan. It's a prayer for the mixed devotees of Narayan. In other words, this is how the materialistic devotees pray. It's like this. It's, fra- it's, it's putting a frame. You know, throughout the Bhagavatam, we're going to hear lots of prayers of pure devotion. Here's a prayer that's actually not pure devotion. Here's a, here's a prayer where your intent is to crush your enemies and be protected from, you know, from, from, from those that you see as your enemies. It's, mm. it's a whole different thing. And we're going to see that the the result of that approach is anxiety. Right? That was an aha moment. Yeah, I think it, I, I yeah. really think. It was, I mean, I would like to research that further. I would like to ask some real Vaishnava pundits and scholars if that's their understanding as well. But it seems to me that that's the case. Can right? I continue? Yes, I think we can uh, end the chapter. We got just a couple of verses left. Uh, Vishvaroop. You're going to make the it, Raghunath. You're going to make it. Vishvaroop, who was the most liberal, spoke to King Indra. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold it. <laughs> oh, you're right. I'm sorry. My bad. My bad. Oh, there's Vishwaroop. only one last verse left. This is it. This is it. Ready? Vishvaroop. I'm not ready the yet. Most, <laughs> the most liberal spoke to King Indra. The secret hymn that protected Indra and conquered the military power of the demons. Wow. Here it is. So that's next chapter. You can learn but that. But interesting. So Vishwarupa here was called um, Udharadi. Udharadi. What's, what verse is that from? Tivraina Bhakti Yogi. Udharadi. Uh, Tivraina Bhakti Yogi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bhakti-yogi. I know what you mean, but I can't think. Udharadi, Udharadi. I don't know. Anyway. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But uh, here it's translated twice. In the word for word, it's translated as very broad minded. Uh, in the actual translation, Prabhupada says uh, the most liberal, right? Mm-hmm. Now we have to think this person that Indra is approaching, he's more sattvic than Indra, he's more realized than Indra, he's more detached than Indra. And he's capable of thinking with a broad mind. So although he's born in the dynasty of the demons, Mm. he's capable of thinking very broad-minded and saying, it's not only the family that I'm born into that's my family. In one sense, Indra's as much my family as anyone else too, right? I I see the entire world as, I think, broadly, right? I'm not sworn to one side or the other uh he had the capability of thinking that way he was very broad-minded that sounds like a good quality yes yeah yes it is but what's going to happen is although he does his job for injury very well he composes this shield-like mantra and that's a powerful thing to do right i came up with with the right sounds that created a, a, something that made you unconquerable by your enemy. He did he did his job as asked, but because in the future he's going to show a little goodwill to the demon side, and it's not like he was trying to trick Indra. It's just who he is. He's broad minded. Indra's going to see that good quality that he doesn't possess as a problem. He's going to see his broad mindedness as a threat, and he's going to create and he's going to do something absolutely dirty, low down. Out of fear that he might lose his position, my my own priest, my priest, right, my priest, just went and helped my enemies, and he's going to cut his head off. <laughs> Mara, please slap him right now. He looks like he's <laughs> have a good slap. I mean it. He needs it right now. It'll be good for him. She's poking me with her needle. Poke them. All right. Let's get some takeaways going here, Mr. Kostuba. Let's get some takeaways takeaways here. People are eager. (laughs) (laughs) Somebody's eager. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) 
Worship of the Gunga and deities has been happening uninterrupted for millennia. Millennia. Oh, yeah. My Eternal. face and wrinkles and abs are all about to be burnt. Burn, burn my up. abs. Burn it. <laughs> Feel the burn. <laughs> Feel the burn. Our Feel greatest the burn problem. has a different message there. <laughs> different meaning. Yeah. <laughs> Our greatest problem is this material body and material families is all temporary. Okay. Uh, yeah. Feel the presence of other great souls in the holy places. Yeah. Great souls. Add transcendental sound during our downtime. Changes, changes everything. everything. Yeah, that's not saying. <laughs> we said to think of the same thing. Changes everything. Why should I worry? Radharani knows what we need. Oh, what you yes. worry? <laughs> Radharani's on uh, it. There's there's invest- your there's your takeaway, Ragnar. How's that for you? Radharani's, Radharani's on, on it. it. Yeah, okay. I was taking care of it. I like that one. Um, don't invest in false security. Krishna's our only security. Okay, like it. <laughs> when you're practicing bhakti, if your intention is pure, mistakes don't matter. No, that's right. You try your best. And <laughs> not yet, not yet, not yet, right now. You got to stay awake a little bit longer. Ask Krishna to stir it up, stir it up, so, Krishna, stir it up, Krishna, stir so it up, we can clean up our shortcomings. This rest yes, of so we can clean. Okay, stir it up, Krishna. And, and no, not yet. Radharani's on it. Radharani's on it. There you go. Wait, we just did that. <laughs> no, we can't. <laughs> okay, all right. Hey, we got uh, Gabby from Montana here. The secret other out there. How, how long have you been listening to the show, Gabby? Two years since Joe Rogan. Now wow. she's in India. Do you have any association with devotees out there? Nothing. None. Never met a devotee. Oh, Gabby. Unbelievable, huh? Ah, pilgrimage is good. We're wiped out. We're about to like go out and do some up oh, thing, something. Mayor, can you bring everybody back? Bring them back where? Did their pictures on their thing. Oh, bring them back, people. Everyone come back. Check it out, everybody. There they are. Saskia's here. Rajas Sundari Radha. Cold plunge. Karina. The chief. Look who's here in the back. Can you see who that is? It's Lilo. Lilo, get out. I had Lilo no idea. from Colombia is here. That's so cool. <laughs> and look, it's oh, the Lord Pag became a shy bite. What's Rogona? How did Lord Pag become a shy bite while on your watch? Well, she's both. <laughs> she's happily both. <laughs> Hey, Baba Nanda is in Vrindavan, really. What's that? Baba Nanda is in Vrindavan. Who's in Vrindavan? Baba Nanda. Baba Nanda is in Vrindavan? Yeah. It's like our whole Christmas Sages community has gone to India. Except Road Rage. Hey, Baba Nanda, Harry Bowl. He's like, where are you? They're in Var- Varanasi. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a little crazier in oh. Varanasi, isn't it, people? What time is the show tomorrow? No, is at 4.30. Same as today. Oh, no, 4.30. 7 a.m.? 7 a.m. What time? 7 a.m.? 7 a.m. Eastern time. Okay. Sorry, guys. We're bouncing around. Bouncing around. At least we're doing something. Thank you, everybody. It's a beautiful day. Every beautiful day. Let the magic continue to flow. Oh. Adibo.